we've really learned an enormous amount about how the virus is spread, uh, how we can take effective measures to prevent it from spreading from person to person, and most importantly, how to manage effectively uh, patients who get sick with Ebola in order to improve the survival rate for those patients. There have been a number of epidemics over the years, but this is certainly the biggest and most sustained epidemic that we've seen, and it's certainly the epidemic that's been associated with the largest number of deaths from Ebola virus disease that has ever occurred. Ebola virus is a virus that appears periodically in populations mostly in Central and Western Africa. Uh, we really don't know where the virus lives in its natural habitat. The thought is that it may hang out in fruit bats or in apes or, or monkeys that may be uh, killed for food uh, by local people. And periodically, the virus breaks out from those animal populations into humans and causes uh, epidemics. If somebody becomes ill with Ebola, typically they'll have uh, fever, uh, muscle aches and pains, they'll uh, feel poorly. We now understand that very often they'll have uh, a diarrhea, which can be quite severe. And in the uh, late stages of the disease, in the patients who progress to, to die, they may actually uh, begin to hemorrhage. Um, the uh, virus can be passed from one person to the next if somebody has close contact with that person with their secretions or their blood, if they're handling the body after the patient has died without wearing gloves or other protective equipment. The typical situation is that just a couple of people would get infected uh, that way, and then if those people either recovered or, or died, uh, then no one else gets infected. And that's why the previous epidemics have really been very contained or limited. And for uh, reasons that are still not fully understood, this epidemic has become much more widespread. Ebola isn't really all that hard to diagnose. The, um, the symptoms themselves are relatively nonspecific in that uh, they could be similar to flu or to malaria or a, a lot of other infections that, that cause fever and, and aches and pains. Uh, but in, in terms of the ability to diagnose it in the laboratory, there's a very simple test uh, that is quite uh, specific for Ebola and can be uh, performed in a matter of hours as long as you have the right equipment to, to uh, do that test. There's really no specific proven therapy for Ebola virus disease. The only uh, treatment that's really known to be helpful is what we call supportive care. That is, uh, patients need lots of fluids to replace the fluids they're losing uh, because they're having vomiting or diarrhea or because they're, they're sweating a lot, uh, giving medication to uh, help control uh, some of their symptoms and, and to relieve any discomfort that they may have. Uh, but that's really the extent of, of any uh, treatment. There's been a lot of talk about uh, 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 experimental therapies that might be tried uh, for patients, uh, such as some of these antibody treatments or, or specific antiviral medicines. Uh, but we really don't know yet that those uh, are effective or that they've made any difference uh, in the people who have uh, survived to date. Of course, for those who make it to the hospital and get cared for, the level of care that can be provided is going to make a big difference. So if you're here in an American hospital where we have all of the diagnostic capabilities in terms of monitoring uh, electrolytes and uh, uh, carefully monitoring blood pressure and precisely matching uh, fluid replacement of fluid losses, uh, your success, uh, your likelihood of surviving is going to be much greater uh, than if you're in a field hospital uh, in an uh, economically less uh, uh, advantaged country where the simple capacity to do that is, is, is much lower. we're becoming more effective at containing the uh, epidemic by making sure that the people in the area know how to protect themselves from Ebola, but doing a better job of identifying people who are suspected of having Ebola, isolating them, and making sure that when the patients do get sick, if they have a confirmed case, that uh, only people who are using appropriate uh, protective equipment are having contact with them and preventing, especially spread within families. Brigham and Women's Hospital uh, has an extensive global health program. Uh, particularly, Paul Farmer, uh, through uh, Partners in Health, 
uh, and his uh, group, uh, who are, uh, most of whom are uh, here at Brigham and Women's Hospital as well, uh, have been uh, working to, particularly in Sierra Leone, to, to help set up treatment centers and to organize care more effectively than has been done uh, to date, and will hopefully have a profound influence on the epidemic there. There's been a lot of effort uh, devoted to trying to develop a vaccine for Ebola, especially in the, in the last uh, several months. There had been a number of candidate vaccines on the shelf, and these have been moved very quickly now into human trials. Uh, the first uh, vaccine candidate from the National Institutes of Health uh, has shown preliminary evidence in initial human studies that it can generate uh, an immune response to the virus in terms of uh, antibodies, whether these are effective at preventing infection or uh, improving outcome from Ebola infection is the next step. I think the most important lesson we've learned uh, from the current Ebola epidemic is the need uh, to be vigilant for the emergence of new infectious diseases. Uh, we've been reminded about how interconnected we are across the globe, and an infection uh, or an epidemic that emerges in a seemingly remote part of the world could quickly come to affect us here. But having a robust public health infrastructure, having the ability to respond quickly both at the source of the epidemic and here in the United States to implement appropriate treatment and containment procedures is going to keep us safe. One of the things that the current uh, Ebola epidemic has done is really to force us uh, here at Brigham and Women's Hospital to develop a plan for how we're going to deal with uh, emerging infectious diseases. And uh, he, both here and across the United States, hospitals have developed highly effective approaches to uh, screening patients, to identifying people who have suspect Ebola, and a plan to then uh, isolate and manage them uh, safely uh, to protect hospital staff, to protect other patients, and to make sure that the epidemic doesn't spread uh, throughout the community.